Welcome to the Speakers Practice and our Friday Forum. Hi, I'm Adrian McLean, the founder of the Speakers Practice. The Friday Forum is for business professionals. We speak to professionals on all sorts of topics to help you with innovative techniques as well as established business skills. Our focus is to discuss methods to help you to promote your business, especially by speaking. Whether it is giving a presentation or the numerous ways to promote your business. This is a free 30 minute session. In the marketing system I follow and coach in Book Yourself Solid, this webinar is an always have something free to offer event where you will meet amazing business people who can help you promote your business in a variety of ways. We have a very special guest joining us today, Lou Bouton from the East Coast of the US. Lou Bouton is an online branding specialist and a video pro who helps entrepreneurs and service professionals build breakthrough brands on the internet so they can have more visibility, credibility and profitability. Lou delivers innovative online pre branding strategies, including video production and editing, social media marketing and online video consulting. Lou is a former television executive who worked for E! Entertainment Television and Fox Family Worldwide in Los Angeles. He's also an author and ghostwriter of six business books, a certified guerrilla marketing coach and a Book Yourself Solid certified coach. Wow, Lou. Hi there. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. I'm, I'm tired just listening to that oh. introduction. I'm like, wow, I've worked, I've worked a lot of places. I think I'm ready to retire now. <laughs> oh, you, you've got such a, such a background. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, um, and now I'm just at home. You know, I work from my home, so I've got my little green screen background here. And my dog, who you may or may not hear in the background. Hi, yeah. <laughs> um, right down, Marco. Marco the pug likes to likes to make appearances, but thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, look, it's fantastic uh, having this opportunity for you to join us. Uh, we're looking forward to speaking about how video is having a real impact in uh, uh, in and on businesses for today, and the importance of it for business in the twenty first yes. century. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I'm happy to share some fun facts and figures and show you a few slides if you want, or if you have any questions, uh, you know, I'm happy to, happy to answer those. But I like speaking to speakers because it's really just, it's a fairly natural transition to go from speaking on stage to speaking on video. And really, you, have, you can have a worldwide audience without having to go anywhere. So that's the thing I like about, one of the things I like about video. Yeah, well, so we're, we're halfway across the world and we, we can do these Google Hangouts and it's almost like we're together. Yeah, yeah, so it's great fun. So, yeah, well, I'll pass over to you, Lou, and uh, okay, perhaps have some questions along the way. I'm sure I have lots. Yes, feel free to um, stop me at any point. I'll share my screen here and if it see if the technology decides to work today. Yes, there we go. So there's my little slide. Now this is for the US, but the, the thing that I always am struck by with video is that it's become so pervasive. And this is you know, a, a statistic from the US, but 89 million people in the United States will watch 1.2 billion online videos today. So that happens every day, 89 million people. And 80% of YouTube's traffic and views are from outside the US. So it's really become a worldwide phenomenon and really a great way for anyone to basically broadcast to the world. And you know, video has become very important as a communication medium and as a marketing medium uh, because you can do so much with it now. So I'm going to share another slide here. Mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, interesting that video has kind of taken off and also really helped with brands and with sales. So there's so much you can do with it. Uh, some of the stats that I came up with here is that people who view a product video are 85% more likely to buy. Uh, videos actually increase people's understanding of a product or service by 74%. 90% of people who use video say that seeing a video about a product is helpful in the decision process. 
and this is a, a good one, 80% of your online visitors will watch a video, but only 20% will actually read your content in its entirety. So it's a great way to share and communicate and sell. And whether you are selling products or services or whether you're a speaker or a physician or a chiropractor, you know, it really doesn't make any difference. It's, it's become very pervasive and very important for all of us to be able to work with this tool like we are here with Google Hangouts um, because there are so many ways to use it. And it's such a great way to reach a huge audience that we didn't have access to before. I, do you um, think that uh, that there's just go, it's increasing? The use of digital yes, is really increasing? Absolutely, it's it's kind of skyrocketing, and I'll share some some um, statistics from YouTube in a moment because that's really the biggest video viewing site. And the interesting thing is that a lot a lot of people assume that YouTube, in particular, is you know is uh, skews for younger demographic or has younger viewers um, or silly videos of cats playing the piano. And there's plenty of that, but all of the major brands are on YouTube and advertisers, and it really does cover all demographics. So it's it's grown dramatically. Um, and I use YouTube as an example because that's really the biggest video site on the web and also the, the second largest search engine in the world right behind Google, who obviously owns YouTube. Yeah. So it's growing dramatically. And um, I, you know, I sort of liken it to um, businesses. If they didn't have a website, you know, five or 10 years ago, they were sort of thought of as kind of out of date or uh, antiquated and the same is now becoming true of if you don't have not only have a website but if you have video you know you really need to have video on that website mm -hmm. so YouTube actually gets more than a billion unique users each month and six billion hours of video are watched each month on YouTube which is almost an hour for every person on earth 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute and as I mentioned earlier, 80% of the traffic from YouTube comes from outside the United States. So it isn't really just a, an American thing. It's really a worldwide thing. And um, here in America, we have the Nielsen ratings and they rate TV stations and TV programs. And we have all kinds of different cable networks here from CNN to I don't know what, but um, now it's at the point where YouTube is actually reaching more uh, adults than the cable networks. So they're starting to eclipse television stations and television networks. So, so it really has grown dramatically. And compared to other social media, it's also the top social media network in terms of monthly visitors. It just surpassed Facebook. So uh, again, when you think about, you know, we hear a lot of buzz and a lot of uh, things about social media, but um, YouTube is really a social medium as well. And is in fact, you know, much, much more popular and has more users than uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, et cetera. So it's really a, a force to be reckoned with. Any questions before I move on? It's just amazing how it's how it's growing so fast. Yes, it is. It's unbelievable. And as I mentioned before, it's the second most popular search engine and um, really, you know, become very ubiquitous. Um, and also for search engine optimization, it's, it's very uh, powerful in terms of helping you be found on the search engines. So if you do the right things on YouTube, you can really have a huge competitive advantage and drive a lot of traffic to back to your own website. Um, and again, there's, you know, a lot of people talk about viral videos and it's, it's kind of difficult to have a video that's truly viral. But the main thing is if you're reaching your audience and your target market, then that's, you know, all you really need to do. You don't necessarily have to have millions of views on a video. You just have to have the right views. Mm -hmm. So um, I found this uh, statistic, which is kind of interesting, where basically uh, it says that 53% of YouTube videos have fewer than 500 views and another 30% have less than 100 views. So if your video is getting more than 100 views, you, you know, you're not doing too badly. And at the same time, only 0.33% have more than a million views on YouTube. And those are typically music videos and celebrities and things like that. So people tend to get hung up about the number of views. And I think what, really what we need to think of is how can we reach our target market using video and YouTube? And how do we resonate with that audience, create videos and create content that's relevant to them? So a couple of examples of things that you can do with video and what others have done in it 
with it in the past is building a memorable brand. Uh, there are a lot of YouTube celebrities and you know some sort of people who have become YouTube famous. Some of them started out you know with fairly humble roots like Gary Vaynerchuk who's uh, seen on the upper right part of this slide here who has um, started with a, a small YouTube web TV show called Wine Library TV and he now has over 500 videos and 71,000 subscribers to his videos that have over six million views and again it's nothing fancy and when he did his show it was to, you know he was wine tasting because that's his background and talking about wines but uh he had a very uh sort of humble set not great lighting not great production but it was really all about the content and he's since written uh, two best-selling books and is worth a lot of money so that video has worked for him in terms of building a brand um it's worked for companies and corporations in terms of building a brand and having a presence like the our friends at blend tech blenders um, they have uh, a funny little YouTube show called will it blend where they destroy things in their in their uh, industrial strength blenders and uh, they've got 800,000 subscribers and 257 million views so it's been extremely effective for them as well and it was just a fun little gimmick like hey you know this is how powerful our blenders are let's put something in them and see see if it will blend so it's uh, become sort of a youtube sensation yes, and um, one other one. example okay. oh yeah <laughs> one other example is uh, a young lady who's from my area here in new england and uh, her name is michelle fan and she was doing makeup videos like how to look like angelina jolie or how to put on makeup like katie perry again she started with these little how-to videos on youtube and now she has 7 million subscribers and over 1 billion views. I think she's 24, 25 years old and she's worth about three or $4 million from, from what I could see on the research. So, so um, you know, those are some good examples of folks who started out, again, they didn't have any huge advantage other than they were producing compelling content. And that's really what it's all about. And I have an example and a client that I'm proud of as well. Um, and my client owned a, a beach house or a vacation rental in Costa Rica. And when she started with video, she really knew absolutely nothing uh, about video, no technical skills whatsoever. But she started to create these uh, videos about vacationing in Costa Rica and just sort of her on camera with her iPhone, nothing fancy. She uh, eventually has created over 100 videos. Some of them have 93,000 views, which isn't too shabby for a just a homemade video. She has over a quarter of a million total views and more importantly, her business has grown dramatically because of all that visibility on YouTube. So she's been able to double her rates and, and have all kinds of cool things happen. So, and that's just, again, you know, she started a few years ago with um, no videos and no skills and, and just had an idea and we worked together and she did her homemade videos and she's off to the races. Wow. That's fantastic. So it really is, it, it is pretty incredible what you can do. And I, I'll share if it's okay, just a few of the keys to um, when you create videos on YouTube, you know, obviously a lot of it is the content and the message, but the other half of it is the sort of nuts and bolts and the technical aspects of, of uploading properly on YouTube and making sure that you're uh, optimizing your videos so that the most people can see them. Mm -hmm. And that really all comes down to, um, creating titles and tags and descriptions on YouTube. Those are the three areas that YouTube gives you to take advantage of. And you have to put keywords in those areas. I'll show you a screenshot in a moment so you can see what I mean. Also custom thumbnails, those little teeny samples of the video that you see, they've become very, very important. So you may want to create your own thumbnails rather than settle for the ones that YouTube gives you. Um, YouTube has another feature called annotations and cards where you can put clickable links inside your videos and drive traffic back to your websites. And there are other sort of uh, cool tricks like end card graphics and customizing your channel, uh, making your channel customized and, and make it look like the rest of your brand. And ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, it's really about quality and consistent content and really putting you know, good videos that people want to see and, and information that you're able to share. So I'll stop and take a quick drink and see if, there, if yeah. you have any questions before I continue. Yeah. Well, there's been uh, quite a lot of changes that YouTube 
with these cards and the mm -hmm. uh, the end cards are they uh, like a, yes. a PowerPoint slide that goes on the end? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and YouTube is constantly you know changing and and um, making it difficult for those of us who try to keep up with it. But again, basically, you know, the upload button is always there, so it's relatively easy to, to get videos onto YouTube. You can customize your your banner or your, you know, YouTube header. You can create a, a channel trailer so that when people first land on your YouTube channel, you can show them kind of a welcome video, so you have the option to do that. And you can organize your videos into playlists. And all of this really just helps you customize the experience and make it easy for your viewers to find their way around your channel. You can see here is an example of um, you can, where you can customize and put your, your welcome video or your channel trailer. And you can edit any of the stuff in YouTube. There's usually a little uh, pencil editing kind of thing up here in the upper right hand corner if you mouse over it. And that's where you can edit or change your channel art. So the, the, you know, the idea is, or the best practice really is try to make your YouTube channel an extension of your brand and, ex and an extension of your main website so there's not a disconnect and everything looks like it's integrated. So here I've, I've put a, you know, a new banner on my channel just to try and match it with the rest of my branding and I've got my little welcome trailer here which is you know, just various tips. So anyone can do that. Anyone can say, you know, I'm gonna select the video that's gonna be my first impression video on YouTube and I'm gonna have that front and center and you can uh, change it up or, or uh, replace it whenever you want. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Also, um, if you want to create channel art for YouTube, uh, they give you instructions to do, to do that so that you have the correct sizes and things like that. And what I do is I go to a free resource called canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. Mm -hmm. And um, they have right in Canva, they have a place where you can get templates and the correct size for YouTube channel art. So I can just go to Canva, pick something out and, and build it from there, which is a nice little shortcut for creating channel art. So again, the upload, you know, there's an easy place to upload video. You can make your videos public, private, unlisted, or scheduled, which is another sort of new thing. So if you want uh, to upload a video, but you don't want to release it until a few days, you can set the date for release like you do with blog posts. So you can schedule your videos in advance. You can launch a Hangout from YouTube like we're doing here. You can uh, record directly from your webcam to YouTube. So you can just you know record right into your webcam and, and it will upload immediately to YouTube. And as you know, these Hangouts like we're doing here, once the Hangout on air is complete, it will go to your, your YouTube channel. It records automatically to your YouTube channel where you can go in there and, and edit or, or um, do what you need to do with the video once it's complete. Um, earlier I mentioned the importance of titles and descriptions on YouTube videos. Uh, so obviously when you're uploading your video, you wanna use keywords in your title and also keywords in your description. And then the third section is called the tag section. And that's where, uh, again, you have an opportunity to put your keywords into the video. Uh, there's also an, uh, a button now that says custom thumbnail. So if you don't like the three uh, choices that YouTube gives you, you can actually upload your own artwork or your own thumbnail to YouTube to make it easier for people to find your video. So there's really quite a bit that you can do once you're inside YouTube to customize the experience, you know, make it really work for you and drive traffic back to your website. And one of the things you can do with that is if you include a live link in the whole URL in your description, that will become a live link back to your website. And then you can, all, you can see uh, here on the right hand side, I've got related videos and most of those are mine, which again is sort of a benefit. And, and that's really a matter of using consistent keywords. So I'm always using, you know, video marketing and the same kind of keywords. So chances are the other videos that show up here on the sidebar are gonna be my videos in, instead of a competitor's mm -hmm. videos. So that's, that's called metadata, and that's basically the title, the description, and the tag, and it's, it's really, according to YouTube, a, a very important part of, of making sure that your video is able to be found by the search engines. And once your video is on YouTube, you can take the embed code that YouTube provides and then put your video on your own website or blog, 
which you know many many of your folks probably already know that it's a great way to share your video and again once the video is on youtube it is relatively easy to share to other social platforms mm -hmm. so once i upload a video to youtube i share it and promote it on youtube and twitter and google plus and pinterest and even linkedin's here so they make it very easy for you to share the video and to really spread it around and, and get as much leverage as possible with um, with Anyone? sharing the video what um, i've been doing is just putting a a photo on the website and then linking it mm -hmm. using the link is it better to embed the code or or uh, you can do it either code? way, but if you actually put the code on your website and the video is right there, um, you know, you're going to get more prominence from YouTube and those those views are going to be counted, you know, more. It's just easier for the viewer. I always think, you know, the fewer clicks that the viewer has to do or the, the less work the viewer has to do, the better. So I usually do. I mean, I may send out the link in an email or put it in an e-zine, but I'm usually going to um, put that embed code here that's right here into my website or, my, or blog so that the video will appear on my website or blog. Oh. And they can click it right there and play it rather than having to follow a link back to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. Yep. Thank and you. at the end of the day, you know, I want the traffic on my site. I'd rather, you know, if they're, if they're on YouTube, they can get sidetracked or pulled away. But if they're on my site, then I have more control over that experience. And then here in the US, and I'm not sure about there, but um, you know, we have the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, which is very popular. And they do a, a really great job of taking their TV show and putting that presence back out on YouTube. So they'll take bits and pieces of their show and upload it separately to YouTube. And oftentimes it gets more views on YouTube than it does during its original airing on the network. Um, so they've taken advantage of all the, you know, all the space that YouTube gives them and they've used, you know, you can see here they use quite a long description because they have all that space. So it's like, why not use the, the real estate that YouTube gives you? They've got custom thumbnails so that you can tell sort of at a glance what the clips are about, you know, who the guests are and things like that. It's a little small on the screen, but they do a good job with their thumbnails. They, they provide custom thumbnails so that you know exactly what you're watching. And, you know, the upside of that is they get an additional, what this, this particular clip got 3 million views in less than 24 hours. Something that they uploaded last night, I saw today on YouTube, has 10 million views. So that, so it's pretty significant uh, the way that they, you know, a, a traditional TV station or network is going to YouTube and taking advantage of YouTube. They do, they sort of do everything right. They have, you know, the custom thumbnails. Again, they just, they're just really putting a name over the screenshot so you know who's, who the clip is about. They've got, you know, long detailed descriptions. They've got a nice descriptive title. And the other thing that's interesting that I notice about most of these videos that we can take from them as well is that they're taking a longer clip, like, you know, it might have been a 10 minute clip originally, but they're only taking three minute bits of it. So if you have longer content or things that you can break down into shorter clips, definitely five, three to five minutes or less, then that's a great way to go. So they do a great job with that. And again, you can see their custom thumbnail, you know, uh, you can see quickly that that's Barbara Streisand and that's Billy Crystal. And they've got, you know, very good descriptions so that they make it easy for you to find if you're searching for it. Mm -hmm. So I always look to them. They do a great job. Another another uh, U.S. marketing coach, uh, Marie Forleo, uh, does an excellent job with YouTube. Um, she's grown her channel enormously and she's really, really popular. She does videos all the time. And again, you can see how she adds the text to her thumbnail so that you can see what it's about without having to search around too much. So she does a, a good job with those thumbnails as well. Are those um, thumbnails can, done with, with YouTube? You um, could do them with YouTube, with the YouTube editor. Um, what I typically do, and I think what, you know, what most folks do is they'll take a screenshot from the video and then they'll use some kind of photo editor like Canva or, um, you know, uh, pick monkey or something just to add text on top of it mm -hmm. so that you can see at a glance, you know, that this video says four ways to shop in your intuition, even if you don't think you have it. So I think she's just taking a still from the video and then putting the type over it mm -hmm. to help say what that, see what it's about. She also does closed captions, which not a lot of people do so that I guess, 
the advantage there is if someone's watching at work or someplace where they can't have the volume up, they can still see exactly what she's saying because she's got the entire transcript um, in her video as, as the video is running. So th those are just some kind of case studies and examples of, of ways to really uh, optimize and maximize your YouTube channel. Um, so I won't get really into the annotations and, and more advanced things other than saying that um, when you are creating videos on YouTube, you have the opportunity to add overlays or what YouTube calls annotations. And these annotations can link back to your website or link to another video or link to your channel. So as you're creating your video, you have the opportunity to put in annotations like, like Jimmy Fallon has done here. So if you click on more clips from tonight's episode, you'll go to additional videos. So this is what I meant about when I'm talking about end cards. This is also an example of an end card. So when Jimmy Fallon's video ends, a slide comes up, but that slide is interactive and clickable because they have added annotations, which are clickable overlays, so that you know if you click on any of these things, you'll go to the appropriate spot. So when the video ends, rather than you know, just going black or having another video come up, it'll give you some options. It'll give the viewer some options for what to do next, um, which is another thing that they do really, really effectively. Mm. And then finally, um, YouTube has also done something new with, with what they call their cards feature. And like annotations, you can add these to your video, uh, but they're a little bit more visually interesting and they're also clickable so that um, if I've got, if I'm talking about an offer or, or, you know, my online video survival kit, I can have that pop up at a certain point in the video. And if somebody clicks on it, they will go directly to that page. So it's just an, another way to take your YouTube traffic and drive it back to your website or to a place where you want to uh, get people to. So that's a, a relatively new feature and a, a pretty easy way to add, you know, visual links to your video that's gonna drive that traffic back to your website or blog. And you can also create these, these end cards for yourself using just you know a PowerPoint slide or something that you put at the end of your video and then add the annotation so that those links could be clickable to uh, another location. Mm -hmm. So I've created like an end card here, you know, which I just created in canva.com again. And what I'll do is I'll bring this over to YouTube and then I'll, um, overlay some videos in here so it'll give folks some other choices of other things to watch or they can subscribe so I, once i put this on youtube i'll make all of these annotations so that they'll be clickable back to my site mm -hmm. so those are just a few of the ways that you can optimize youtube and, and maximize it really just get you know more more views reach new people um, reach your target audience in a more personal and engaging way and, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of people say, well, how do I get more views? How do I get more people to watch my videos? And my sort of snarky answer is, well, you have to make better videos. But, <laughs> but there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, you really have to, you know, if you want people to watch your videos, you have to create relevant content that resonates with them. So um, that's kind of the bottom line is, you know, you have to try and find out what your audience wants and needs from you and do your best to provide that to them. So I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen and pop on back and see if, if you have any other questions. I know I'm uh, probably just about at time here. So, yeah. Well, uh, it's, such a, uh, it's such a big area. It's, uh, it's amazing how YouTube uh, is changing, constantly changing. Mm -hmm. uh, is that going to just keep happening? Is that what they're... Yeah, I think it will continue to evolve and they'll keep us guessing and, and continue to add new features and, um, you know, hopefully make it as user friendly as possible. But, um, you know, I don't know how they keep up with the, the volume uh, that's coming there. But, um, you know, it's since it's owned by Google, it's all kind of integrated. And the other thing that's interesting is the way they've sort of married Google Hangouts and YouTube and Google Plus and sort of made them all intertwined so that now we can create a hangout and that now becomes you know a, a video on youtube once it's complete so you have a lot of ways to create your content as well it isn't a matter of going off and producing something you can use a hangout for coaching or for you know sometimes i'll do quick little tips even if i know there's no live audience i'm really using it more as a recording device to get it to youtube quickly so i use hangouts for a lot of different purposes even when it's not really for a broadcast per se it's really more for 
uh, a way to get it up on YouTube quickly. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Lou, for your time and, and expertise. You. It, it's really exciting uh, being working in this area that's uh, that's at the forefront of what's happening uh, in a you know with video. Yeah, and it, the nice thing is again, you know, having been in the television business, um, now this technology and this ability to you know broadcast to the world is available to anybody with a computer and an internet connection and a YouTube account. So, you know, for essentially for free, we can become our own little web TV station and our own little broadcasters. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. So we don't need the we don't need the networks anymore. We can do our own thing. So, <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks so much, Lou, and uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be following you with all the changes that come up. Thanks, and uh, if you need anything, just give me a shout. Okay, bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you.